I want to introduce and uh, express my appreciation to Joshueda, who's my co-leader from Brazil. And she's the one who found out about this conference and said, hey, you should take a look at it. It just sounds incredibly exciting and interesting. I haven't had a chance to attend any workshops yet, but I plan to. So I just want to welcome everyone and thank you all for being on time. And we're from all different countries and time zones, which is very exciting to me. So if my voice is not loud enough or I'm speaking too fast, just tell me. My name is Mavis Sai. I'm a psychologist from Seattle, Washington, and I'm the mm -hmm. co-creator of Functional Analytic Psychotherapy, which is a therapy that focuses on the authentic connection between therapist and client. What I found is that there's so many people who either are not interested in therapy or who don't have access to therapy that we could really benefit from this authentic connection that I find is at the heart of being alive. And so I created a nonprofit called Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project, which brings the principles of functional analytic psychotherapy just broadly to the general public. So today we're going to be looking at using courageous conversations to transform conflict from this model. It's a very experiential model. And, and uh, Joe and I are very excited to share it with you. Mm -hmm. so in terms of the Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project, we are this global network of open-hearted individuals who strive to meet life's challenges through deepening interpersonal connection and rising to the truth to ourselves. So we're expanding just all over and I would love for you to be part of this project if what we do today resonates with you. More information will be coming about that later. So in terms of this conference of coming down to earth and focusing on conflict, transforming conflict and conflict resolution. You already know this, the conflicts occur when there are differences in values, motivations, perceptions, ideas, or desires. And there's usually a, a very deep personal and relational need at the core of conflicts. So we'll be exploring that a little bit and also focusing on how we can open our hearts to ourselves and other people in times of conflict and, and just in general, how much that's needed. So what we're going to do is to invite you to experience an awareness, courage, and love for ATL, focusing specifically on transforming conflict, which are courageous conversations. Joe, would you like to talk about what a typical ACL meeting is? Yes. What uh, you are going to experience today is going to be a typical ACL meeting that includes, we started it by introduction, explaining a bit what it is, introducing ourselves, and also a sort of shared agreement, okay? Just to, to set some rules on how you're going to develop our work. Then it comes a video, a meditation, contemplation questions, and this, those three, they change from meeting to meeting depending on the subject we want to explore. Then there is a part that is creating extraordinary interactions that is the core of everything that we, we do here, okay? And we, what you're going to experience today, but also there is a TED talk from Mavis on this that you can assist later 
that is very, very good. And at the end, we debrief and closing the, the activity by just sharing how it was and ask you to fulfill a form to, to guide us in future meetings. Let's start then with the shared agreement. First, we ask for confidentiality. You can say whatever you feel comfortable saying here, but we ask that you do not take from here what you hear from other people. Be all the time in a mindful way in how you can be respect and kindness to yourself and to the others and try to go out of your comfort zone while answering those questions that you're going to put and also expressing yourself. But it's important, very important, that even making this movement to go outside your, your comfort zone, you practice self-care. So just consider what is good enough, what is comfortable for you to share or not. Try to speak and listen from your heart and try to not give to advice to people. Just listen to them and embrace whatever comes. It's really beautiful, Joe. Thank you for going over our shared agreements. And I would just love to see the hands of everyone. Just like, I agree, you could raise your hand. And you're welcome to say whatever it is about the meeting that you shared, but just don't, I, and you can talk about the themes of what happened here, but don't identify anyone by what we say. So it looks like everybody agreed and, and thank you. So part of what we incorporate into a typical meeting is a video that invites people into the theme more and having empathy is an important aspect of transforming conflict so the video that we are going to show today is it's i think it's the ultimate empathy video it's actually created by the cleveland clinic on on their patients but what it does is it gives you insight into what people are might be experiencing that you have no idea about. It's called, and some of you have probably seen this, it's called If We Could See Inside Other People's Hearts. I'm going to go ahead and share that right now.
Joe, I've seen this video many times and I know you have too, and it just never stops moving me. So what we'd like to invite you to do right now is to debrief by writing in chat. If you could see inside my heart right now, you would see and tell us something that is really meaningful to you that isn't obvious from us looking at you. And Joe, I invite us to do the same thing. See inside my heart, you would see. Maybe, do you want me to read the chat? Um, if you want to, please. Okay, I wrote that I'm a bit anxious and happy. Deborah, tenderness and sadness. Some people wrote, Alien. yeah, some people wrote to me privately, connectedness confusion, grief and trauma, emotion and affection, mm, sense of home and welcome. How much I love the world and want, the, want us to be gentler with each other and the rest of the community. I wrote that I'm feeling, I'm feeling sad at having said goodbye to my son who left for Europe and someone said I can't type to everyone uh, because you don't want to or you can't if you want no to. they can't in fact they can't some of the having difficulties so they the can way, the way that you do it is in chat you click on there's a name of someone, just click on that and you'll, you, you'll see everyone in the meeting. That's this option is not available to some of them, maybe. Yeah, it's happening to me too. I meant to write to everyone, but it, there is only Mavis or Jesua, Jesuda. Me too, me too. That is strange. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah, me too. I can't write to me three. <laughs> so, so nobody can write to everybody or just some people can't? I well, did. We will, we will um, make do with this and let's see if there's any way I can. I think there's an option that limits chats to just the presenters but I don't know how to change that. Interestingly enough, before it was going to everyone, but recently that came that limitation. So something yeah, happened I mean, in between. I, mean, I, I have um, been allowing participants to chat, so I'm not understanding why. Um, when you, all of a sudden, every, everything just turned private, so. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, I think it was my fault. Sorry about that. Now I think everyone can can do it publicly. 
there was something that sorry about that so there was a, a wide mixture of emotions that people talked about and yeah, now I feel like everybody's writing good to hear from you all I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again and go back to the PowerPoint. So what's next is a meditation focused on transforming conflict and I want to make sure that everyone can hear me and that everyone is muted because there were complaints of noise before when there's the video coming on. Um, I, I want to acknowledge what Joe from UK said to everybody. My daughter was just diagnosed with autism. I'm afraid the world won't be a welcoming place for her. Just want to acknowledge how hard that is and just want my wish is that you will find the people who will welcome her because there are there are the ones who will and the most important welcoming person is you and i can see from your face that you love her no matter what how old is she joe Five. I'm just sending my warmest wishes to your daughter and you. Uh, so let's let's settle in for a five to six minute meditation. If you could focus on your breath and let yourself sit in a comfortable upright position. And as you breathe in and out, inhale and exhale, take your awareness throughout your body. Just letting go of whatever tension you may feel. Like starting with your feet each time you exhale, just breathe out some tension if you feel it. And just going up your legs, your hips, your belly. your upper torso, your neck and shoulders, and your head. So with each breath, release a little bit of whatever tension you may feel. And now, if you could take your awareness into your heart sensing whatever emotions are present and accept that this is where you're starting from. Just bring tenderness and gentleness to whatever feelings you're having. They may be feelings of struggle, feelings of sadness, feelings of gratitude, feelings of connection. It could be just the whole spectrum. These are very challenging times that we're living in. And just make room for whatever it is you're feeling. And my wish is that you can rest gently in the softness of your own heart. And may your heart remain open to all other beings. Next, I invite you to focus on a truth that really matters to you, that may feel vulnerable for you to speak, a truth that you may be avoiding addressing because you don't want conflict.
One of my favorite quotes is by Martin Luther King Jr. He said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So just allow yourself to relax more into the center of your being and notice your heart space and what arises for you when you hear the Martin Luther King Jr. quote, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Be gentle and compassionate with yourself and notice how your body and mind respond. As I invite you next to turn your attention to someone that you're in conflict with or trying to avoid conflict with. Just notice who pops into your mind when I say someone you're in conflict with or someone who you're trying to avoid conflict with. What do you appreciate about this person? What are their best qualities? What might their core values and needs be? Can you try to put yourself in their shoes for just a minute, seeing what they see, feeling what they feel? like we were doing for the people in that video, if you could see inside my heart. If you could see inside this person's heart, what are they struggling with? Now, if you can, bring together your compassion for yourself and your right to speak what's true for you with compassion for this other person. So imagine how you might approach a conversation where you make space for this other person's values and needs but then you also speak about your own values and needs from a place of vulnerability. So creating space for this other person's values and needs, but also for your own. What's important for you to say from a vulnerable space to this person? From a place of compassion. So what I'm asking all of us to do is to stretch our ability to love and understand beyond the level of our instincts 
and inclinations beyond what feels easy for us to do. And this is the work of a lifetime, especially in times of conflict. It's really easy to blame somebody else. And it's especially during times of conflict when it's important for us to work on taking responsibility for our role in whatever conflict is there and to use it as an opportunity to develop more of the qualities that we want in ourselves. So it could be empathy, it could be compassion, it could be willingness to own our truth in this firm but loving way. So just sit for a moment with what the next step in your own involvement is, listening to your voice of wisdom. Take some more deep breaths. Feeling your feet solidly on the ground, feeling the support of your chair. And as you feel ready, gradually, very gradually, bring yourself back to our virtual room. And I invite you to write in chat what came up for you as you were listening to this meditation. Uh, Claire said, resistance and hurt feelings when I was asked to put myself in the other person's shoes. I really thank you for your honesty here because it is so hard to do to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. And I wanted you to feel your own, just make space for yourself first because we can't really be compassionate with someone else until we have felt our own compassion for ourselves. So I would love for everyone who's feeling resistance to just welcome that resistance and to be tender with your own resistance. So I'm, I'm seeing uh, a number of people say, uh, so lack of sensitivity, resistance, resistance, realizing he was reflecting and amplifying my issues back at me, some opening, seeing the point where I can't go further, Find, found it hard to get past parts I don't want to feel, I don't want to be as feeling vulnerable, sadness but gratitude, has it helped me with a difficult close relationship, Jashweta, hard to feel connected at the beginning but very moved after that, opening my heart, also the fear that I'll be consumed by sorrow and sadness of the world. I want to say to the other person, I want to be a better listener, sadness. So I think, Clary, you were saying you were feeling resistance, and I said, please just embrace your resistance, and that led to sadness. Uh, Jow, no way out. Couldn't, Anne couldn't do it with my own physical pain and discomfort. Don't want to have to look after him and be kind to him when he's taking my daughter from me. That sounds incredibly painful. Mm. Notice how insecure I feel about not being enough. Grateful for the invitation to stretch. Mutual tenderness and desire. So I, I would like all of us just to hold with kindness and gentleness the feelings that have been expressed in chat. There's a lot of 
struggle here. And it, it makes total sense. I mean, the people that we care the most about are the ones who can hurt us the most. And because we've been hurt so badly, it's much harder to have empathy and compassion. And like I said, just start where you are and be kind to yourself. Don't demand that you be anywhere other than where you are. And I don't think that anybody expressed anything in chat that we don't all feel or have felt at some point. Uh, Laura, you, you wrote something really expressive here, and I just want you to know that I, that I read it. And I'm sending you compassion. Going back to, so this is, this is a slide about principles of courageous conversations. And you can just sit with it and not do anything for a really long time. You can just kind of be with it intellectually. But it was one of the descriptions in our, it was, yeah, we had put it in the workshop description. So I just wanted to make sure that you have it that when you want to approach someone, this increases the likelihood of success. If you can reaffirm common purpose, if you can speak with vulnerability, if you can be creative and not critical, if you can focus on what you each want, and if you can brainstorm solutions and create an action plan with a timeline. So, This is, this is where I'm going to ask you, Joe and I are going to ask you to just take a few moments to write your answers to these questions. You can stick with one of them. You can choose to address all of them. But the idea is to write whatever comes to mind without censoring. You don't have to share with anyone what you don't want to share. You're going to have an opportunity to talk about what you do want to talk about in a breakout session, but please just speak your truth to yourself. Okay, so these are the, the questions. What's a truth that feels vulnerable for you to disclose? Or what's a truth that you'd like to speak to someone that you're not voicing? So just take, let's just take one question at a time and you can stick with a particular question if you want. So take, take a minute to write about a truth that feels vulnerable for you to disclose. It doesn't have to be a part of a conflict because we're, we're just stretching our muscles right now. What feels vulnerable for you to tell any of us? Or what's the truth that you'd like to speak to someone that you're not voicing? And related to this, are there ways that you're not showing up fully in your life? And if so, how can you show up more fully? And that is if you want to. So are there ways that you're not showing up fully in your life? And if so, how can you show up more fully? And I'm just going to add if you want to.
and then from a place of deeply knowing that you can use your voice and presence to resolve conflict, what would you say or do that you haven't yet done? And I'm going to put when, if, or when you feel ready. Because I really want you to honor your own timeline. So from a place of deeply knowing that you can use your voice and presence to resolve conflict, what would you say or do that you haven't yet done if and when you feel ready? Does anyone need more time? Uh, raise your hand if you need more time. So it looks like you're all done and I- Do you repeat the third question, please? Yes. Thank you. From a place of deeply knowing that you can use your voice and presence to resolve conflict, what would you say or do that you haven't yet done if or when you feel ready. So I invite you to, thanks to Shweta for putting it in, in chat. Um, I invite you to spend more time with any of these questions if you're in the middle of writing on them and you want more time, just do it at a later time. This is not gonna be your only opportunity to visit these questions. I want to talk to you very briefly about creating extraordinary interactions. Some of you saw my TEDx talk where I defined extraordinary as remarkable, exceptional, unforgettable. And how do you have these types of conversations? Extraordinary conversations are created by one person um, engaging in open-hearted disclosure of what feels vulnerable and outside of one's comfort zone. And they are received with warmth, acceptance, and non-judgment. And both people actually do this. It's like this reciprocal disclosure and reciprocal receiving and listening of each other, and then the expression of appreciation of the other's impact. And what we found at University of Washington studies is that when these elements are present, so we did this with strangers, with this inclusion of other and self scale where they start out and they're kind of separate because they're strangers. And after just one short interaction, they're actually at number, it's like five in terms of just really feeling more connected to the other person. And we just finished a study where we started with couples who were together. And there's also this movement towards much more closeness of like two numbers. Well, we're gonna go into breakout rooms next, but before we do that, I just, I wanna go through our guidelines and Joe and I are going to do a demonstration. So what we're asking people to do is to take some moments to center, like when you're in a breakout room, it's gonna be random who you're with. And we're going to ask you to center and breathe and just connect from your hearts non-verbally, even though we're over Zoom, and even though we may be thousands of miles or kilometers apart but you just take a moment to be with, they're gonna be groups of three or four. So just take a moment to connect with who is in your room. I'd like one person to just take charge and decide on the order of sharing, or you can volunteer the order of sharing, but divide the time equally. 
So if they're 20 minutes, you each get five minutes, if there are four of you. And speaker will share what feels important or vulnerable for them in terms of what they wrote or just what's important or vulnerable in this moment. We have lots of freedom to adapt these guidelines. So let's say there are three of you in the room. Uh, the listeners, you listen from your hearts and you just briefly reflect how you were touched. So there are three people, the speaker gets three minutes and each of the listeners, you get about a minute to reflect and don't give advice or tell others why they shouldn't feel what they're feeling. Sometimes we mean that in the best of ways, but it can be very invalidating. And then the speaker just responds really briefly to what was reflected and you move on to the next speaker and then you close the sharing circle with appreciations. So Joe and I are gonna briefly demonstrate what that looks like. And Joe, so yes. we spent time connecting before the meeting and I just want you to know that my heart's very connected to yours at this moment as well. And that I'm listening very deeply to what you have to say. Okay. I'm, I'm going, so Joe, I'm gonna put on a timer since we're doing a demonstration and we're gonna do a shorter amount of time than they would get in the breakout rooms, but I'm gonna say two minutes and a lot of people who aren't used to timekeeping have a struggle with timing, but it's really important to have equal time and it's okay for you to get cut off. Um, just hold whatever you're feeling with as much care as you can if you get cut off during the time. So Joe, I'm gonna give you two minutes. Um, if you could share something vulnerable from one of these questions or whatever it is you want to tell me and everybody in this space. Okay. Uh, I don't feel comfortable in share anything about question number one. I think this is important to say to people in order that they can do the same. And I'm going to share about uh, the second question that's going to lead to the third in a certain way. What are, are there ways that you were not showing up fully, fully in your life? Yes, there are. I feel very shame about myself. So sometimes in order to propose something, to say something or to go into a direction, it's difficult to me because it always comes to my mind, the feeling or the sensations also in my body that I'm not doing it in the right way, that I do not deserve attention and that my ideas or even my voice does not, uh, does not deserve attention, it's not uh, good enough. And uh, if I was able to go through this feeling, I am sure I would be able to connect more with people and to share with them ideas that could be important and maybe could make some difference to the world. The, this workshop that I organized, it was a bit like that. I need to go through those feelings and propose it to you and also to Nuno. You timed that perfectly, Joe. I wish I could be with you in person right now. I'm gonna give myself one minute. I wish I could be with you in person right now, just, just so that you know how much I'm with you. I heard you saying that you feel the shame and you feel this 
like lack of worthiness, like your ideas and your words aren't important. And you're really feeling what you're saying. I'm seeing your tears right now. And just how much courage it takes for you to show up and, and to say what you're thinking and feeling like you did right now. And you have no idea how moved and inspired I am by you all the time, and especially in this moment. And you start out by saying, I want people to know you don't have to answer the first question because it's too vulnerable. I'm going to answer the second question, and you're being so vulnerable right now. And, and when you're so vulnerable in a demonstration, it opens that space for everyone else. I just want to thank you so deeply and, and to tell you how much I love you and appreciate you. Thanks, Marie. You got really the intention is to showing what I have, what, what I did, or doing what I did, is to inspire people to do the same. Because I really think that be aware of our feelings, be courage to go through that, through them and make difference. Mm -hmm. It's important and it's relevant to everybody. That was really amazing. And um, if any of you have a reflection for Joe, please write it in chat because she did something really brave just now, and it'd be helpful for you to just let her know that you're with her. So thank you for that. Are there any questions before I put you into breakout rooms? We're going to invite you to share from your hearts and to listen really deeply. You're going to have about five minutes per person. And we're going to have a timekeeper in each room, and I'm also going to be letting you know the general amount of time that you have as the moderator for the chat for the breakout rooms. But I'm relying on you to allow space for everybody to share and to get feedback. So there's a lot of just gratitude coming at you from people in the in chat. So Vicky was saying she felt stuck until you spoke. I'm Are still there, a bit moved. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any questions before I put put you into chat? You're going to have about 20 minutes in chat. Can I ask you a question? Please. Yeah, so um, I have wrote down the answers to some of the questions, but I don't have the questions themselves. So if we could have the questions on the chat, I think it would help us on the breakout groups. So, Great. I've just posted it then. It again, no problem. You just posted it again in chat. I don't. So I don't know if you get to see chat while you're in the breakout rooms. Yeah, we do. We do. I think. Okay. Okay. No, it's a different chat. Right. So you won't see the same. So, it's best if you copy it and then paste it. Great. Right. Into the I'll new do that. chat. And, I'll do that. And Jal, the the basic invitation is for you to say something that's vulnerable for you to say. So it doesn't have to be answering the questions exactly. It's for you to show up fully the way uh, Joe just did with me as fully as you can. I'm going to go ahead and put you into breakout rooms. Uh, Joe, you're going to be in a breakout room and you don't need to share again, but you can just moderate the room. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Ready, everybody? Okay. It's going to be three people a room. 
And I think you're going to need to accept that you were put into a room. Would anybody like to speak out loud? Which takes, it's hard enough to write in chat and, and now I'm, I'm inviting you to speak in, in a larger group. So pay attention to if there's just this feeling in your heart of, yeah, I want to say something. And if so, take the space. I feel such gratitude to you and Joe, Mavis, because I feel that you embodied impeccability and such tenderness in the way you facilitated this, such, such care into every step. And I, I especially love the, the not feeling hurriedness of the process. It was as though you, it was a spacious space. So thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Uh, is it Mid Midi? Is that how you pronounce your name? And where are you from, Midi? Yeah. Well, uh, my feet are in Chumash land, in just on the edge of Los Angeles County. Um, but I, my origins are Welsh and my adoption is Corsican. That's a very rich heritage you have. <laughs> I love the word impeccability. Uh, Joe and I, we put a lot of thought into this and it was really wonderful collaborating with you, Joe. And I, so this, what you said about spaciousness, that, that's amazing that you felt that way because a lot of people feel rushed since we're saying, you've got this much time in the breakout rooms and you only have three minutes to talk. And it's actually, amazing that you can find spaciousness within that uh, because that's one of the things I'm working on in my life is that no matter how rushed or time pressured I feel that I take the spaciousness to be with what I have to be unhurried with whatever time I have and I think you just embodied that so thank you Lee. Um, really interesting things coming out in in chat and we are going to take, we're going to take time to read everything later on, but I wanna make sure that, that we have the time to, to close us as a group as well. So I just wanna acknowledge what Laura said about vulnerability, a step change and going beyond resistance, but feeling supported. Interesting to look at how to be vulnerable and positive together. Thank you, Laura. Mavis, Mavis. Uh, yes. sorry, um, just to say that if you're looking for something to help, um, Midi and uh, Sarai and I were in um, the same room together and this was part yes. of the spaciousness is by using timers, but physical timers. See, Midi's acknowledging, yeah, hopefully Sarai is feeling the same, but there's something about having physical timers, not digital because you create an expansiveness with time. And this is part of the work that I'm doing about looking at how time doesn't rule you, but how you are in connection and, and it has no fixedness. You know, that's all, that's all a societal thing. That's all done by other kind of constructs, but actually how you can expand it. And, yeah, I, so. love, I love that idea. Yes. And, and more people that do it, more energy goes to it as well. So anyone can do it and you just do it and it, you just decide. Nobody I, makes this decision, I, you decide. I've had timers like that and I don't know where they are, I'm gonna get some more, thank you. Thanks for that, Kim. I also need to say that Kim did it with great skill. That, you know, it looked effortless, but I don't think I would have done it so easily. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Kim. So, um, Want to take a minute to talk about my Zoom trainings, Joe? So this is this, yes. This is an invitation. Yes, we would like to invite you to participate in the Zoom trainings from Mavis 
Okay, I am a, a chapter leader from Rio de Janeiro. As we mentioned in the very beginning, this is part of uh, a global project. So all you are invited to know more and to join us, maybe train us almost once a month. There are months that we don't have this. They are experiential trainings exactly like what you experience today. We change the protocol, you change the, the team, but the, the, the subject of each of the protocols. But I think it would be worth if you like to join the community and maybe have your own chapter and practice this with your family, with your community, or whatever you think this sort of authentic, authentical and vulnerable relation can improve conflicts or improve anything. Yeah. So we're always wanting more people to join us and at whatever level you feel, we love to have chapter leaders and chapter leader, it sounds like it might be a big thing, but it can be a very small thing. It could be just with you and the people that you interact with anyways. Um, it could be with strangers or the general public. It could be as little or as big as you want it to be. And we have an app coming out later this year, early next year. So you could also just join the app, but either put your email and chat to me privately or just write me at mavist at aclglobal.org and just put in the subject line, join ACL, and we'll explore what makes sense for you to do. But we just would love to have you as part of our global network. If what we did today resonated with you, there's, there's just a lot more of this. This is people who, who are willing to show up fully the way that you did. Thank you for the emails that are coming in to everyone and to me privately. So any questions? Feel free to speak up or to write in chat. And uh, Joe and I will be staying afterwards as well. So I'm going to put our feedback in chat right now. And we would love for you to just really appreciate if you would take about three, it takes about three minutes to fill out the feedback form just to let us know what what went well for you. What can we change? So here's the link if you could copy it and just do it right now. Um, how long do circles normally last when facilitated from Leona? Usually 90 minutes and some people do it for longer. Some people do it for two hours and some people do it for even longer than that. But I, I like to suggest 90 minutes when we first start out. So we had a 90 minute meeting today and that's fairly typical. So as you're filling out the feedback, I just want to say again that it was an incredible experience for me and Joe to be with you today. And we're gonna stay after if you wanna talk a bit, but if you need to go, and some of you, it's like after midnight, um, my request is that you unmute yourself and say goodbye in your native language. that somewhat simulates being in person because people don't just disappear when we're in person. They say, bye. And <laughs> Hiri bye then from Scotland. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. Thank you. Adios. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Wow, oh, bye bye. Obrigada.
So Alina, you're not sure how to copy the link. Are you still here or did you leave? Um, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to- I'm still, I was just messaging. Yeah. Um, and I I'm just wondering how I can get it to you. I'm um, sending my email now. Okay. So, did I pronounce your name? My, my name. Elinid. 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 And where, where are you? Okay. I'm in the South Wales Valleys. Did you say South Wales? South Wales, yeah. <laughs> People are here from all over. Okay, I am going to send you the link right now. I'd like to say thank you very much, and I think I'm going to say bye-bye as well, because... Thank you, Elena. Yes. Thanks for asking for the link. I'm, I'm sending it to you right now. Bye-bye. Thank you. And I'll be going as well. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye, Alan. Bye, thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. So bye-bye. Bye, Maris. Bye, Joe. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. I'll be staying a bit. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Bye bye. Uh, Joe, sure, can you hear? Me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, Daniela. Yes. I'm so glad that you got back in and you got in back into the room. <laughs> I was like. Me too. <laughs> I was sort of giving up that I wouldn't be able to do that. And you, and you were really focused on, I want back into my room. <laughs> well, I'm trying, I don't know how. And then I saw the little icon up there and I figured I'll, I'll just try and then it worked. Now, what, was the, what was the icon that you saw? They were like, like a, a square with little squares, divided in little squares that actually said small small rooms or breakout rooms or something. So I clicked there and then I could go back to mine. So it was good. I wanted to, I wanted to share with you that I, um, Joe, I listened to your talk on the Ibaki meeting last week. You gave a talk. Yeah. About those uh, meetings. And just I was, a, Daniela, just a minute. That, let me just tell Mavis because she's not aware about it. Oh, okay. Uh, Anna Paula <laughs> have invited me for a live last week uh, in a behavioral center here. And the, the subject of the talk was the meetups, was the ACL model, and uh, we using it in those uh, uh, meetings. So is this what she is, is talking about? And that it was, and that it was the reason why you saw so many people in the previous um, meeting, Friday meeting, because I was talking for more than 400 people and it's recorded in YouTube and more than 1,000 and a half people have seen Wow. The, the, this video, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That what I wanted Ana Paula to, to, to share with you because it was her idea and her movement to this. So uh, Danielle is talking about this. Please go, go yeah, ahead. That's Annie. amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know that there were these meetings. I actually read about FAPI and, you know, your your method mavis and i've seen your talk and i i read i read your books and but i didn't know that there was this model for for the bigger meetings which is a different proposal right for using this so i was very happy and i was very moved by your talk joe it was very intense very intense very nice very heartwarming very 
honest. And I felt very hopeful after I listened to you. We are going to have, uh, each, each Friday, we are having these meetings. It's in Portuguese, okay? So just to, but maybe run all of them in English once a, uh, uh, once a month. Mm -hmm. I am running once a week with other friends, other chapter leaders in Brazil, exactly because of the pandemic situation. But we mm -hmm. are going to have on Friday one, I have a, a Facebook group for Rio de Janeiro chapter. You can get the information there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, jo I, jo I, I joined it. I joined that group on your Facebook. So then I wanted to be part of it. I'm, I'm part of a group at a university here, a private university here that we're starting, starting to, we already started this work for like um, reaching out to people as like a support group for people that they, they fill out a little Google form like that, asking for help and saying that they're having a hard time. And then we call them and we have phone conversations with them, like up to five phone conversations. And now we're thinking of expanding to a group, a group um, mode so that more people can be, you know, with each other. So, so it was great that, to be part of this. And I actually invited my group to be at the meeting tomorrow. With, with you guys. That's fantastic. Um, that's fantastic, Daniela. So, uh, Joe, Thank you. somebody wanted your Facebook information in. Yes, the, I, I have a, a question to Veneta. Uh, the, the Facebook or what I publish is in Portuguese. So, uh, I'm not sure maybe if your face group of or the, the ACL leaders or FAP information group would be better to her because everything that I publish in mine is in Portuguese because it's uh, my, the, my target public is Portuguese speakers. So, um, Guys, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to say goodbye because I actually have to work still now. I, I, I'm Hi, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. Very great. Thank you. Daniela, feel free. Also me onto another. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Daniela, feel free to write me if you I need will. any assistance. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mavis. Thank, Thank you all. You. Bye.